Hello and welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Dave, where I find myself back in Brewster, New York with the Magic Doc. And one thing that I'm really curious about is how does a Tesla charge on NACS versus Magic Doc? I'm really curious. Is it going to be the same speed? Is it the same speed perhaps for the LFP, which charges at a little bit slower rate, 170 kilowatt max, versus the regular Teslas that will go up to 250? Or is Tesla secretly derating, let's just say, when you connect up via CCS? Well, I'm going to test it out. I'm currently at 5% state of charge right now in the Tesla, and we're going to plug in first to the NACS and then see what happens. So let's get into it. So what we have here is my brand new 2023 Model 3. This is the this is the base base model. This is the rear wheel drive with the LFP battery pack, the lithium iron phosphate battery pack. This car is riding on aero wheels. It's the white paint with the black interior. And uh, you know, this you can't get any cheaper than this right now with the Tesla. This is $42,990. And uh, it's a great car, loving it. So, but uh, today we're going to test out NACS charging on a Tesla versus CCS charging on a Tesla. Well, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to show you. I've got the Combo One adapter. And of course, here in Brewster, New York, we've got the Magic Dock. So let's go ahead and plug in first. Now, let me just preface this by saying that I've driven all the way up here from uh, Darien, Connecticut and preconditioned all the way to this site. And I started off at a 39% state of charge and I drove the car real hard and I'm currently at a 5% state of charge. So this battery pack is toasty. I know that because preconditioning shut off about, about six miles ago, which tells me that it's ready to charge. It's at the optimal temperature. So let's go ahead and plug in and let's just see if this thing connects. We have, there we go, it's green. And let's go in and measure the speed that we're getting here. Okay, so at a 5% state of charge, it's kicking up very quickly, 161, 171. All right, so it's hovering right around 170, 169, which is, I think that's the amount that the car's capable of doing. So that's good news. Let's see how long this thing stays there. I'm going to let this go all the way up to, I believe, ah, let's take it from 5% to, why don't we take it from 5% to 25%. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the car back out on the road. I'm going to drive it again. I'm going to precondition right back to this station. And then we're going to plug in the Combo One adapter which is, um, which is, let me see, I have the device sitting here somewhere, which is this device right here. So I'm gonna use the Magic Dock, plug into this, and then plug this into the Tesla. Now, why would anyone ever wanna do that? I, I don't really know why you'd wanna do that if you have a Tesla, but what I'm trying to find out here is, is Tesla somehow limiting CCS charging of cars under the same conditions. So will Tesla know that this is a Tesla using a CCS Combo 1 adapter? Will it charge at the same speed? I don't really know. But this thing is pegged at 169 kilowatts, uh, pretty much from 6% all the way now to 13%. Uh, we'll check in in a minute here and see how we're doing once we get closer to 25%. Okay, so we're at 25% and we're pulling somewhere in the mid 130s in terms of kilowatts. So we're going to unplug here. All right. And put this back in the magic dock. There we go. And 
let's go drive this car from 25% down to 5%. And then we'll plug in using the magic dock. We'll, we'll if this 2D is, is open, we'll come right back to this unit for consistency. And I will, of course, precondition the car to the same Brewster Tesla supercharger. Not very busy here today. We got another Model 3 over there with the aero wheels charging. It's pretty calm here today in Brewster. All good. Beautiful day. March 5th, 2023. I was here five days ago charging my wife's GV60 here on February 28th. Um, and that was a great experience to actually use the Tesla Magic Dock, which we're going to use here on this car today and test it out. So let's get going. Okay, so I'm on the road right now driving the Model 3 from 25% back down to 5%. Just a low fear on 84. I'm heading west towards uh, Newburgh, New York. I won't, won't go all the way over there and back. But I'll be on the road here for a little bit, and a couple of a uh, couple of things that I'm, I'm sort of just observations about this LFP battery pack. We know that that it is recommended to top off the battery at least once a week to a hundred percent, and a little bit of phantom braking there. Wow, first time, first time I've had phantom braking with this car. Uh, I'm sure there's more where that came from, but uh, anyway. Uh, you know, in doing recent, my recent charging test from zero to a hundred percent in this car, which you'll also be able to catch on this channel, uh, out of spec Dave, very interesting results there, by the way, but a couple of observations about that, this LFP battery pack, you know, I've read things, oh, it, it doesn't charge well when it's cold and, and, um, you know, it, it's, it, it needs to be warm and, and I'll tell you what, I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, if you watch my soon to be released or already released zero to hundred charge battery, uh, uh, charging session with this car on a V3, um, it was clear to me that this battery pack needs to be warm. And I don't mean just, you know, testing it out or, uh, uh preconditioning for, uh, 20 miles or 30 miles, it needs to precondition for a long, long time. And I don't know if that's just because of the chemistry that's in the lithium phosphate or lithium iron, um, uh, you, you know, battery, um, the, what they call the lithium ferrous or lithium iron phosphate battery. But it seems as though the chemistry in that battery takes a long time to heat up perhaps twice as much time to heat up um, as, uh, as, as perhaps the non LFP battery from, from Tesla. So that's something to, that's something to keep in mind. The other thing is that at a very low state of charge, my understanding is that the battery is very difficult. Now, I don't know if difficult is the right word, but there's confusion in the BMS or the computer system to be able to determine how much energy is really left in this pack. And as a result, um, this thing doesn't lose power all the way down to 1%. I mean, you know, you, you give it the beans and it goes. Now, some of you may remember I rented a Model Y from Tesla. It was a 2022 long range, all wheel drive. It did not have the LFP battery pack. And that was a funny video because the, the people at Hertz, uh, the, the, the rep at Hertz told me, don't, don't drive, don't drive the car less than 9% state of charge. And I was like, I got to test that. So, um, uh, I did. And, uh, I actually brought that car down to 1% at the same exact supercharger that I, um, did my zero to hundred test in, in this car in Darien on the northbound side of 95 V3. And um, of course, it, it, it worked fine down to 1%, um, no issues. Although when I say it worked fine, that car had serious turtle mode, serious degradation in terms of performance, that Model Y. This LFP in the Model 3, no, I mean, it felt just as sprightly at 2%, 1% as it, 
as as it did with 90 percent um so you know pr pretty amazing there's one other thing i want to say about this lfp battery pack is that at a very high state of charge you don't have regen and that's that's true for any car and i don't know if this is this feature is available on every tesla but there's a little setting within um within uh let me see pedals where is it apply yeah within pedals and steering which is apply brakes when regenerative braking is limited and that works really really well see the problem is when a car's at a super high state of charge the car can't put the energy back into the battery pack anywhere so you lose regen but what Tesla has done with this little feature on the pedals and steering menu is they blend in friction brakes uh, to, uh, to, to give you the same exact feeling of regen. So it's not like you, you take your foot off the accelerator and you coast like in a regular internal combustion car. It has the same feeling consistently when you're at a high state of charge or a low state of charge. And I really like that feature a lot. So anyway, let's keep driving. Um, down to a 21% state of charge right now. As I mentioned, I'm going to bring it back down to 5%. Go over to that Brewster, the Magic Dock. I love the Magic Dock uh, Brewster station. And I'm going to use the CCS Combo 1 adapter. And we're going to see if there's any difference in charging this Tesla using the Combo 1 adapter, CCS, or the NACS traditional method. So stick with me. Okay, I'm back in Brewster, New York after driving the car pretty hard and preconditioning back down to 5% state of charge. And now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using this, this uh, CCS Combo 1 adapter to charge the Tesla on the Magic Dock and compare NACS in the same exact controlled settings. We've got a super warm battery pack just like we did the last time. It's 43 degrees outside, and yeah, let's see how this charges. This uh, Model 3 LFP battery pack charges on the CCS Combo 1 adapter. There's a couple of things. Um, one of the things that I want to point out is that the cost to charge here as a Tesla is $0.39 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, so I will be paying $0.49 cents a kilowatt hour for this particular charging session because I'm not paying the $12.99 rate to buy that down. The second thing is that instead of just plugging in and charging, which is very convenient for Tesla, what I need to do is actually activate the session on the app. Um, so I will do that just like I did in my original video that I put up on February 28th. So here it is, March 5th. We're gonna be testing out the CCS Combo 1 adapter on the Magic Dock here in Brewster, New York. Okay, so here we are in Brewster, New York at the CCS Magic Dock, if you will, the NACS slash CCS Tesla Supercharger. This is a special unit, and the weapon of choice that I have today to test out this Model 3 LFP is the Combo 1 adapter. So I say we get plugged in here, and let's see how we charge. I'm going to go ahead and activate this on the app right now and see what happens. Okay, so I've activated the, the Magic Dock. I'm on same station as I was before, 2D. Let's see, I'm gonna try and do this. Uh, I can't really do it with, I gotta put this video on pause. Hold on one second, folks. Okay, so I've got the uh, CCS Combo 1 adapter plugged into the CCS adapter that's embedded in this Magic Dock, which you can see up in there. You have to push up and then plug it in. All right. And let's see what happens. Will it even charge? It's thinking. It's like, is this a, is this a Tesla? What are you doing, Dave? All right, we've got green. And let's see what happens here. All right. Popping right up, 172. Actually, I don't think I saw 172 before. Already at a 6% state of charge. 
169. That's where it, it, it nestled right into 169 with the NACS adapter, popped up to 170 here. So, so far, it does not seem as if there's any degradation because of this CCS Combo 1 adapter. Now, I'd be really curious to know if on a long-range Model 3, you know, the regular lithium-ion battery, if you are going to be limited to similar speeds to this. But what's interesting is there's no degradation from in this particular car. In fact, it's doing a little better, 171. Now, again, both batteries, both batteries, when I pulled in both times, batteries were warm. So this is good. This is real good. What this tells me is that Tesla is not playing any games in terms of, you know, conspiracy theory. Oh, it's a, it's a CCS car. Let's let that charge slower than a Tesla car and give our, you know, our, our Tesla customers that own cars, um, a, a little bit of an advantage. Well, I don't see that, at least not here. Um, the, the limitation in terms of charging speeds, as we've seen, is uh, in one of the videos my son Kyle made about why high voltage cars are currently not charging at a fast speed. That's a great video over on the Out of Spec Reviews channel from a couple of days ago. Um, and, and, and so, you know, the limitations of a lucid air only being able to charge at 45 or 50 kilowatts. I mean, it seems crazy to me. Um, but the fact is that that's all it can do based on the, the architecture of the system because it's a 900 plus volt system car. The GV60 that I charged here um, at Brewster on February 28th, that could only pull a maximum, I, I, I think it's theoretically 100 kilowatts, but I only pulled, I think, 97 during that session. We've seen others charge upwards on CCS cars of over 150 or right around 150 kilowatts. I'm not sure if that was in a, if that was in um, Marquez's, uh, Marquez Brownlee's R1T or if that was Tom Malagny's F-150. I, I can't remember where, what kind of speeds they pulled, but up to this point, I, I don't know if, uh, if others have charged their Teslas, I haven't really watched the videos, uh, you know, using the CCS combo adapter at speeds higher than 150. But, you know, you saw it right here. I was pulling 172 in my LFP Model 3. So um, I'm going to keep, uh, we'll speed up this video right now and we'll take it up to 25%. So there you have it, the uh, Tesla Magic Dock charging the LFP Model 3 using the Combo 1 adapter worked perfectly. And I just spent 10 cents more than I should have or needed to. But what I was able to, at least in my own mind, prove out is that Tesla, they're playing fair here. They're saying, hey, listen, if you've got a car that can pull whatever it can pull, we're going to give you as much as we can. But the CCS standard itself, I think, is limited to 350 amps. And even though these supercharger stations are capable of putting out north of, I believe, 600 amps, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but the CCS limitation of the standard itself for the adapter is actually going to limit that charging speed. So good session here. Uh, very happy. Thanks again for watching another episode of Out of Spec Dave, and we will catch you on the next one.